Hi, everybody. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for spending part of Easter Sunday with us on TCM. Up next, an epic dramatization of Jesus' life from MGM in 1961, King of Kings. Pulled straight from the pages of the New Testament, King of Kings begins with Jesus' birth in a Bethlehem manger, then follows him through the most significant turning points of his biblical life. King of Kings was produced during the golden era of biblical big-budget Hollywood epics during the 1950s and the first part of the 1960s. For King of Kings, production crews constructed nearly 400 sets, hired thousands of extras. Two years earlier, MGM was basking in critical and box office success with director William Wyler's Ben-Hur, so MGM execs were enthusiastic when producer Sam Bronston pitched the idea of putting Jesus' life on the big screen. Technically, King of Kings is a remake of a 1927 silent film directed by Cecil B. DeMille called The King of Kings. The. This ambitious 1961 version was directed by Nicholas Ray, a surprising choice to direct such a massive production. Ray was known and celebrated for directing more intimate, modestly budgeted pictures with far fewer characters. They live by night in a lonely place, rebel without a cause. Ray knew he was operating out of his comfort zone, but he embraced the challenge. Unlike its big-budget counterparts, King of Kings is not packed with famous faces, although there are some recognizable stars, including Rip Torn as Judas and Robert Ryan as John the Baptist. The role of Jesus is played by Jeffrey Hunter, best known at the time for his supporting performance in John Ford's western The Searchers. This is a, a slightly different role. From 1961, with narration written by Ray Bradbury and performed by Orson Welles, both uncredited, this is King of Kings. Biblical epics were big business in Hollywood during the 1950s and into the 60s, yet big screen adaptations of Jesus' life struggled to find consistent movie audiences. Just a theory, but non-believers might not have been interested in the stories and some devout believers might have considered it sacrilegious to portray Jesus on screen and then profit off his name. Again, just a thought. Today, King of Kings is generally regarded as an ambitious production and a pioneering film, partly because it was one of the first major Hollywood productions of the sound era to show the face of Christ. But when released in 1961, King of Kings was only modestly successful at the box office, was completely skewered by critics. Four years later, in 1965, The Greatest Story Ever Told, which featured an all-star cast directed by George Stevens, also flopped. Modern big-screen movies about Jesus have achieved more commercial success than those earlier epics, but they also stirred more controversy, including Martin Scorsese's The Last Temptation of Christ from 1988 and Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ from 2004. Up next, one of the earliest adaptations of Jesus' life story. We go back 34 years to the 1927 Cecil B. DeMille silent version of The King of Kings. <laughs> 